Welcome to the Raised with Jesus podcast, 10 minutes every day where the life of Jesus meets yours. You've got your daily Bible reading for March 29th, 2019, looking at the last portion of Galatians chapter 4, beginning in verse 21. Paul writes, Tell me, you who want to be under the law, are you really listening to the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and one by the free woman. However, the son by the slave woman was born according to the flesh, but the son by the free woman was born through a promise. These things can be used as an illustration, namely, the women are two covenants. One is from Mount Sinai, bearing children into slavery. This is Hagar. You see, this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and she corresponds to present-day Jerusalem because Jerusalem is in slavery along with her children. But the Jerusalem that is above is free. She is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, barren woman who does not give birth. Break forth and shout for joy, woman who does not suffer birth pains. Because the barren woman has more children than does the woman who has a husband. Now you, brothers, like Isaac, are children of the promise. But just as back then the one who was born according to the flesh persecuted the one who was born according to the Spirit, so this is also the case now. But what does the Scripture say? Throw out the slave woman and her son, because the son of the slave woman will certainly not receive the inheritance with the son of the free woman. For the same reason, brothers, we are not children of a slave woman, but of the free woman. This is the word of our God. Paul here, referring to actual, literal, historical events, and he uses them as an illustration and an application. He's talking to these Gentiles, for the most part, although there were certainly some Jewish converts among those Galatians to whom he had witnessed and visited, and these these people have a pretty good grasp of Israelite history. When Abraham was 75 years old, God spoke to him and promised him to that he would give him a son. Look at the stars and count them, if indeed you can, so shall your offspring be. But that son didn't come until Abraham was a hundred years old. Now, probably around the time he was, you know, 85, 90, 90 90-ish, Sarah said to him, well, you know, it looks like God's taking his time. Why don't you take Hagar as a secondary wife and and then have a child with her, and maybe that's how God has desired to fulfill this promise to you. Hagar was an Egyptian servant living in the household of Abraham, and so Abraham does. And after that, it doesn't make anything better. Hagar begins to despise her mistress Sarah, and perhaps, you know, bragging or looking down on her, or, you know, not listening as as she was expected to in that household, because she was bearing the child of Abraham, and Sarah wasn't. And Sarah was only ten years younger than Abraham at that. And the question behind all this is answered in the idea that this is actual historical reality that Paul then applies in a kind of allegorical way. He applies this to the, the topic that they're talking about. The history of it is that is that Abraham ends up sending Hagar and Ishmael away around, you know, 10, 12 years later when when Isaac has been born and Ishmael is making fun of Isaac at his weaning, probably around two years old, and, Hag- and Sarah says to Abraham, send the slave woman away for she will never inherit along with my son. Legally, Hagar was a secondary wife, and Sarah was the primary wife, and so Hagar had some legal standing, but once the primary wife had a son, then that son would receive the inheritance. And Sarah said to Abraham, send Hagar away, she she shall never inherit along with my son. And the contrast there is that Hagar's son Ishmael came about through Abraham taking matters into his own hands and and working <laughs> well and going through with that sin in order to in order to produce a son and Paul says we are not like that verse 28 now you brothers are like Isaac and you are the children of the promise and 
Isaac was born when Abraham was 100 years old, Sarah was 90 years old, and there's no logical reason why that should have happened, because that woman is, you know, past childbearing years. And God's promise stood firm. God's promise was fulfilled, and God's promise gave a son. And kind of the point of contact for us, you know, the contrast between Hagar, the slave and the mother, and Sarah, the free mother, Ishmael, the slave child, Isaac, the free child, Ishmael coming about according to human flesh, and Isaac being born according to God's promise, the slavery covenant representing the law covenant, the freedom covenant representing the promise of God fulfilled in Isaac. Slavery seen in, in earthly events, Mount Sinai and the obligations laid out there, and also earthly Jer Jerusalem and the worship going on there at the time that Paul is writing, and the free mother representing the Jerusalem above the church on earth, and the church on earth and the church militant, that through the promise we are members of this one Jerusalem. We are children of the promise. And the children, slave children, or free children. And so you and I, you and I are free children. Verse 26, the Jerusalem that is above is free. She is our mother. And then down to verse 29, but just as back then the one who was born according to the flesh persecuted the one who was born according to the Spirit, so this is also the case now. And it's the case everywhere, really. If you were to stand up and say that I believe that I am forgiven simply because Jesus died and rose for me, I am saved by grace alone. The Roman Catholic Council of Trent would still pronounce its anathema on you. If you say that you are that you are justified by grace alone, through faith alone, let him be anathema, they said. And that doctrine still stands. Anathema, meaning eternally condemned. They condemn the doctrine of free justification through grace, through faith. The, the same statement that you don't have to do anything, that God does his work in baptism, and that you don't have to be the one to make a decision for God or invite Jesus into your heart or any, anything like that. That is opposed by the, the evangelicals, by and large, people who are still caught up in the idea that they can and they must say something or do something in order to invite Jesus in, in order to actually make the commitment and become a Christian. And in the context here, Paul talking to these Galatians, these Galatians who are being compelled and thinking that they had to be circumcised and obey the Old Testament law in order to be good Christians, Paul says, well, you're not a child of the slave woman. You've been set free from God's law. You've been given a new life in, according to the promise. And so live, don't live as the, the, the slave woman, live as the free woman and live as her child. And so what shall we learn from this? Well, first of all, um, history, especially salvation history, can be used for examples. Um, but secondly, we understand that this salvation history is literal history. Um, when Paul goes into a little bit of allegory here, or application for the Galatians, that's not a blanket, <laughs> blanket permission to do that with the rest of Scripture. But we can use, use scripture as illustrations and as examples. Um, but then thirdly, and this is probably the most important part, to recognize who you are, that you are, you are free. You are a child of the free woman. You are a child of God according to the promise of the gospel, just as Isaac was a child of Abraham and Sarah according to the promise that God had given to them. So as you go about your day, knowing that you are a free child of God, what would you tell him? What would you ask him? What would you talk about with him? Take a minute and do that. You could find us Sunday mornings at 2250 South Holland, Savannah Road, Maumee. You could also find us on Instagram at Raised with Jesus or Facebook. Just search for Resurrection Maumee. God bless your day.